welcome to a new episode of the brand called you today i have a very accomplished millennial anand khumra anand welcome to the show thank you sir privilege to be here thank you anand is from the punjab engineering college he has done a, a qualification from stanford biodesign he is the founder of wellverst which is a clinical technology company that enables health span maximization and like a lot of millennials he pursues his passion and he is a performing poet yeah. so anand let's talk first about your wellverst health yeah uh, what is the meaning of health span maximization so uh, a lot of people are fairly well versed with the concept of life span what what we call how long we will live right but that's not all that matters what matters is that how long will you be able to live independently without medication without being dependent on others mm-hmm. this span is what we call health span okay and with wellverse what we aim is to enable people to live independently as long as possible okay yeah and uh, when you say that you know you're going to maximize health span at what stage of life should i start to think about maximization when an infant is 2 years old okay. you should start at that point okay right so the human boy, uh, body is biologically designed to live up to 119 120 years old right okay. and there are metabolic biological processes that enable the body to live that long but we slowly poison ourselves starting as an infant due to which we get chronic lifestyle conditions and other diseases uh, so we are not able to make up to that point okay so tell me about uh, you know when you founded wellverst health what was your motivation of uh, you know developing a company like this or a business like this uh, so in 2013 uh, i got struck by a, a philosophical thought okay. that eventually we'll stop existing and this thought disturbed me so much that two months i wasn't able to function properly and after that i started researching a lot on what people are doing for health span maximization and maybe extending the human life span as well mm-hmm. are we just here to come and then go away from this earth so this this was a thought that was constantly nagging me and then i found a lot of researchers who are working on life span maximization you know uh, radical extension of life span obri de gray is working in this area and uh, a lot of other foundations like max life foundation are working in this area which gave me a lot of hope that maybe the technology could reach a point where we can live up to 1000 2000 years old and my initial thought was to be able to live uh, up to 100 years old so that we can see technologies coming in which can radically extend our lifespan so that's how it all started so in 2013 i radically uh, transformed my own lifestyle i stopped eating sugar altogether i stopped eating stuff from outside and things like that so that was the starting point and then then it kind of snowballed from there wow yeah wow so you know you speak about uh, managing aging and there is a very old line which says that you begin to die the day you are born yeah yeah right interesting and yet uh, over the years there have been many many things that have been used to managing aging right. including something as complex as human growth hormones the right. gh Uh, I think I'm sure you know yeah, yeah. a lot about yeah, it. Yeah. So, with so many options available, how do I know what is the best option for me? See, so the first thing uh, that we do differently is that we enable body to reach its maximum potential through natural means okay. and not using anything artificial in that sense. Okay. Most of the solutions out there to manage aging. are primarily centered on some other kind of value proposition so for example you'll have a great looking skin or uh, uh, your sexual performance will improve and stuff like that right but what we say is that all these things will come as a by product and you need to fix your internal health parameters through natural means okay yeah so this is where we are different in our approach okay so help me understand the process you know if i'm i'm 63 years old right i want to live till i'm 120 right not that i want to but uh, if i do right i come to you what are the things you will want to change in my life so uh, when we talk about health span maximization we plot the activities that a person can do on a pyramid right and there are four or five things that a person can do mm-hmm. and the bottom of the pyramid which is the lowest hanging fruit and which is the largest portion of anyone's lifestyle is nutrition mm-hmm. so the first thing we tell you is to transform your nutrition and with nutrition we are poisoning ourselves each and every day right okay. so we ask people to do 
fasting intermittent fasting and then be on a low carb paradigm mm-hmm. so we start with this then we ask people to do certain exercises which involve breathing which involve other kind of exercises and stuff like that mm-hmm. and then uh, going up the pyramid there are other activities social you know uh, and spiritual and stuff like that okay. yeah. Yeah. so you know when i was reading about you uh, keto fi yeah is something that i was reading about is there something to do with keto diet and what exactly is keto fi yeah got it so so see as a company what we are really focused on is wellvest health is focus on creating tailor made nutrition for people okay. right everyone responds to different kind of nutrition differently so everyone needs to have a specific kind of nutrition especially if someone has a chronic lifestyle condition yeah. right now the keto fi is one of our brands which is centered on the low carb paradigm mm-hmm. and it is not really much to do with the keto diet as it is to do with the ketogenic metabolic process mm-hmm. so there is a metabolic process in the human body called ketosis and it's an uh, evolutionary speaking it's an archaic process which the body has optimized over time so body is much more adept at using fats and proteins than it is at uh, using carbohydrates mm-hmm. because carbohydrates came into the picture just in the last 10000 years okay. and evolutionarily we haven't adopted to uh, adapted to kind of using carbohydrates okay. right so now ketosis is a process where the body uses a fats to power the body and this is what the brand is centered on what we say is that will enable your body to be powered by fats and other nutrition okay instead of carbohydrates okay and uh, you know i'm not much of a diet fan but i've read a little bit about keto right um how easy is it to adapt the diet that is available on so much the world on the internet to the indian palate so before keto fi it was extremely difficult mm-hmm. but now this is the core purpose of keto fi so what we realized was that a lot of people realize the value of being on a low carb paradigm or a ketogenic paradigm right as far as clinically like for the last 20 years ketogenic paradigm has been used to even reverse type 2 diabetes right but what a lot of people can't do is they can't change their existing behaviors mm-hmm. if you're used to eating a gulab jamun or a cookie or a roti you you can't just change that and people just say it's fine just chuck it right mm-hmm. I, i'll just face some severe consequences but it's fine i need to eat this stuff mm-hmm. so this is where we came in and said okay people are not going to change our products have to change mm-hmm. and this is why we created this entire parallel pantry of low carb and ketogenic products so that people can adapt to the so you have your own products we have uh, like a range of 50 different products and But talk to me a little bit about these products what so, kind of products are these so everything and anything that a person is used to eating uh, in their normal carb regime so mm-hmm. for example starting from flour dosa mix mm-hmm. uh, pancake mix brownie mm-hmm. mix to uh, snacking products like cookies bhujiya namkeen and everything mm-hmm. so we create everything that a person is used to eating in a low carb format so that the person does not have to compromise on their taste okay yeah which means that uh, you know if i want to order a kilo of flour yeah an atta from you um this will be different yeah how will it be different from what i buy on amazon so see a normal atta is typically created from wheat mm-hmm. or it's a mixture of wheat and other millets which yeah. are typically let's say 70 to 75% in carbohydrates mm-hmm. so you can buy uh, making a multi grain atta you can make it slightly lower in gi but it'll still be higher in carbs mm-hmm. right what we do is we recreate all the products from uh, different ingredients nuts and seeds mm-hmm. and there are some natural gum and stuff like that mm-hmm. so uh, like these ingredients go through specific manufacturing processes to bring them into uh, the same kind of texture same kind of taste that people are used to consuming okay yeah and then they can be cooked like any other indian yeah. meal yeah. in any indian home so the interaction with the product is the same the taste is 90% similar the texture is 90% similar so this is how we're trying to do it yeah. i see yeah. so you know uh, anand tell me uh, i've spoken to so many people there's a lot of awareness uh, in at least one segment of indians about gluten free about veganism about making sure i have a low carb diet right is there a lot of competition in the segment so when we started in 2018 uh, we were the first players in india who brought the ketogenic products in india okay. right and um, we have seen trends in two direction one is 
massive awareness among the consumers mm-hmm. among dietitians among diabetologists and things like that and in the last 6 months we've also seen a lot of other brands trying to ride in on the keto wave mm-hmm. so what they're trying to do is everyone is trying to call their products keto friendly whether they are keto friendly or not mm-hmm. so in that sense yeah there is a lot of misinformation going around there's a lot of people who are trying to cash in on the trend mm-hmm. but there are very few players who actually understand what the um, ketogenic metabolic processes and how it can be used to fix your internal and uh, fundamental health parameters right so over the next uh, 18 to 24 months we'll see a lot of these pseudo players and copycat players coming in and all that so the competition is there in terms of absolute spend yeah the competition is there so you know we've got thousands of young people like you who will be watching you and me speaking yeah. um not everyone understands metabolism yeah. etc you know everyone likes a full stomach yeah. and everyone wants to be healthy yeah. so can you explain the process of how there's a good food or a bad food that is good or bad for us i think the first advice i give everyone is that eat as less as possible and being owner of a food brand my investors are going to kill me when i say it like eat as less as possible because you know so Uh, if you let's say are fasting 2 days in a 7 day period then you can probably eat anything right okay. so 40 48 hours of water fasting then you can probably eat a- anything but the timing and the quantity matters a lot mm-hmm. right but since people are not able to like go to this severe behavior what what we have done is we have created natural products which help them to satiate their desire mm-hmm. right while ensuring that they are eating natural products mm-hmm. and which are low in carbs and which don't give them an insulin spike and stuff like mm-hmm. that So the entire purpose of keto five was to kind of take away this pain away from people's mind that you have to plan, you have to think, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, although, like uh, the challenge we uh, we are seeing, uh, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of people just trying to cash in on the trend, mm-hmm. and this is where we see the challenge. This is where we need to create awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, we used to live outside India in the east for many years, and one of the things that Chinese used to do was to eat small amounts. but 5 to 6 times a day right is that something similar to what uh, you are also saying see so scientifically speaking uh, eating small amount of meals uh, spread out through the day does not have a lot of significant advantages over eating one meal a day right what has advantages if you can restrict your food consumption to a window of 2 to 3 hours mm-hmm. this is what we call as intermittent fasting yeah. right so intermittent fasting so when a person is on a fast what happens is that their glycogen reserve glycogen is a reserve of energy let's say if you eat carbohydrates they are first stored as glycogen and then stored as fat right okay. so once uh, you stop eating your glycogen reserve start getting used up right once those are used up your fats uh, getting start used up right So once you start uh, fats getting uh, used up, this is the state what we call ketosis. Mm-hmm. So clinically, uh, what has been proven is that if a person goes into and out of ketosis a lot, it has a lot of hormonal benefits mm-hmm. and it has a lot of uh, advantages related to growth hormone and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. So again, you know, you spoke of intermittent fasting. I'm, I'm a great believer. I've been right. doing intermittent fasting for almost two years. Um, for our listeners and our viewers help us understand what is intermittent fasting so intermittent fasting is a very simple concept and i'll talk about it from both perspectives one is how to do it in a modern lifestyle and why it is relevant like it's simple to understand right so imagine uh, the humans evolving through uh, 50000 years of evolution right uh, a human being 50000 years ago woke up right didn't have access to breakfast didn't have access to stored food they had to walk a lot and since they had been sleeping they had been fasting for let's say 8 to 9 hours right their glycogen reserves got depleted mm-hmm. they got up they they searched for food that which means they exercised yeah. their glycogen reserve got used up even more now they are running on fats right so they got into ketosis and when they found some food it was very low on carbohydrates it was like berries and mm-hmm. nuts and what not maybe meat mm-hmm. and stuff like yeah. that right and they got access to this food maybe once a day mm-hmm. or maybe if they were lucky twice a day right so the body has over the years of evolution optimized itself to operate on this pattern mm-hmm. right so the key now uh, now since we have access to stored food the key now is to mimic this behavior but not compromise on nutrition okay 
right the adverse effect in uh, those times was that they didn't have access to higher nutrition right so let's say they got uh, deficient in magnesium and stuff like that but this is something that we can control now okay. so the key is to mimic that behavior but to be high on nutrition mm-hmm. so intermittent fasting is a concept where you will eat in a single window of 4 to 6 hours let's say and then you won't eat anything at all no coffee no tea 4 to 6 hours in 24 hours yeah, right 4 okay. to 6 hours in 24 okay. hours right no and coffee no tea no tea no coffee you rest of the 20 to 20 uh, 22 hours or 16 hours you you run on water right you you give rest to your body i see and uh, you have to do this 365 days a year or can you binge once in a while you can binge once in a while that's not an issue okay uh, so i uh, personally like to balance it in this way for example if i have been binging for let's say 2 3 days then i'll like to do a 3 4 day fast and 3 4 day just water on water fast. yeah yeah nothing at all nothing at all <laughs> that is so fasting is one of the greatest tools that human have at their disposal to improve their health right yeah are we going back to thousands of years of what we have heard indians do or what my mother used to do or my grandmother used to do fast on every tuesday and friday so i think yeah we are going back there but now the adoption is much higher because now the western society is saying that this is good for you now the science is saying that this is good for you right Uh, like we have known this intrinsically like yeah. fasting for us is not an alien thing right, right. Uh, like our family members do fasting all the time right but over time what has happened in india is that fasting has kind of uh, you know got flavors of religion and stuff like that which has ended up removing the scientific connotation mm-hmm. from it mm-hmm. so actually if you want to really want to reap benefits of a fast you really you you can't eat anything mm-hmm. like so you can't eat sabudana you can't eat potatoes yeah. you can't uh, you can't fast uh, the way people fa- mm-hmm. fast in ramzan and stuff like that that's not beneficial for the human body yeah. Yeah. most most people when they do an, a prolonged fast they end up putting weight yeah yeah because you're allowed to eat in a certain window yeah. and they really eat that exactly time. exactly very good so you know anand uh, i was when i was reading again about you you founded fine superfoods f i n e i'm not sure if i'm getting the pronunciation yeah, that's right. right that's correct yeah uh, two questions on this one is what is fine superfoods all about and second question what is a superfood so a superfood uh, i'll answer the second question sure. first right sure. superfood is a loose definition of uh, a food product that would exceed certain nutritional value per uh, gram okay right and give me an example so so for example let's say we'll say wheat is not a superfood but almond is a superfood okay right and this is a loose definition sure. it will really depend on the region the right. context and stuff like that right but even that you know i can't have you know 40 almonds in one day yeah, exactly that exactly. would also be bad. exactly exactly so uh, with fine superfood what we were trying to do was we were trying to create a product again uh, which which has a connotation in the indian um, uh, palate right and it was a chutney like mixture but a superfood chutney uh, in the sense that nutritionally balanced but very high in nutrition so whatever nutrition you are mis- missing out on in an indian diet you get through that product right and how this product started was that like i mentioned in my journey in 2013 i had a major transition i started creating this product for myself and for 6 7 months i just used to consume it for myself mm-hmm. and then friends and colleagues around me started asking for it and then we started <laughs> producing it and dis- distributing it right wonderful yeah so one more question before i move to the next segment you know you've got a whole range of 50 products you said under keto fine right you've got uh, brands uh, under you know fine right are these available online on amazon or flipkart etc yeah so uh, the entire keto fine range is available on amazon or on our own website and select offline locations also okay so keto fine as a brand um, i'll just uh, like add on to that yeah. so we are not just a ketogenic uh, ketogenic food brand right what we uh, like to call ourselves is that we are an anti carb brand okay. like anyone who consumes high amount of carbs is either at risk of health condition right now or in the future okay. right so everyone needs to lower their carb intake okay right so we have a spectrum of products uh, which allow people to reduce their carbs by let's say just 50% to people who are let's say type 1 diabetic who want to go on a zero carb diet so this is an entire spectrum that we cater to yes. and everything is available online So my what now got to ask you one more question yeah. because you spoke of carbs why is carbs not good for us so uh, i'll just have to dwell into the science of it a little sure. bit right sure so 
there are three macronutrients fats proteins and carbohydrates right whenever we eat macronutrients the body releases insulin to kind of remove them from the and this is like very bare, uh, sure, basic sure. basic science right uh, there are nuances to it right so whenever we eat carbohydrates we have a very very large insulin spike mm-hmm. because to maintain homeostasis the body needs to remove those carbs from the that glucose from the blood and store it as glycogen mm-hmm. right so carbohydrates have the highest insulin spike followed by protein and then by fat fat has the flattest insulin spike right so if you're just eating fat you can never get fat right what insulin does is insulin is a signal to the body that whatever you have eaten is needs to be stored needs to be stored so what we indians do is that we eat carbs along with fats carbs give us an insulin spike and the body when the insulin comes in body says okay uh, uh, like this much calories are in the body store it as fat right so this is why we keep getting fat all the time mm-hmm. and once we remove everything from the blood we again feel hungry and then we again eat high carbohydrates and then there is again an insulin spike so what we need to do is we need to maintain our insulin spike as flat as possible right that's why we need either we need to consume fats and proteins together or carbs and proteins together very interesting so this is a, really a battle between comfort food and super food yeah right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay so you know i'm moving on uh, you know you are uh, a performing poet yeah <laughs> tell me a little bit about it and maybe recite something sure uh so i never knew that i could be a poet and okay. i used to write all the time even uh, like now in retrospect i remember which language do you write in i am an urdu poet urdu yeah. okay yeah. so in retrospect i remember uh, my friends reminding me that i used to create a lot of rhyming lines uh, as a child okay. i didn't remember that but so i used to keep writing in my diary and you know and like 4 5 years back i just starting reciting these couplets in uh, parties mm-hmm. and stuff like that and people started appreciating it and that that's how kind of it okay. started right um, and i think the influence came because uh, we belong to amritsar mm-hmm. and we used to get lahore uh, reception of lahore tv in amritsar right okay. and yeah. my mom used to keep watching pakistani dramas all the time right. and we, we we had this like uh, subconscious training in urdu huh? so i think that's how it started wonderful. yeah yeah wonderful so, so will you recite something for us yeah so uh, there's a couplet uh, on how people ask me like aap shayar kaise bane hmm. to us pe ek uh, char line hai isme ek word aata hai sahir which means magician hmm. आसान नहीं है जज्बात के माहिर का पैदा होना आसान नहीं है जज्बात के माहिर का पैदा होना और मुश्किल है अल्फाज के साहिर का पैदा होना मरते हैं बहुत से किरदार इंसान के अंदर कोई खेल नहीं है किसी शायर का पैदा होना बहुत खूब है बहुत बहुत अच्छा एंड रिक्वेस्ट फॉर ऑल आर ऑडियंस is just interpret this these lines <laughs> yeah so uh, when people ask me ke how you became a shayar and uh, so i just tell them that the first thing is that you have to you have to be constantly be disturbed by some emotion or something that is wrong in the world mm-hmm. right and you have to conquer that emotion so the line says that aasan nahi hai jazbaat ke mahir ka paida hona Correct. right to conquer that emotion absolutely and then to put that disturbance into words aur mushkil hai alfaz ke sahir ka paida hona magician of words yeah. right yeah. and then a lot of personalities get killed in you when you are a shayar because you feel uh, so many things right so marte hain bahut se kirdar insaan ke andar कोई खेल नहीं है किसी शायर का बहुत बहुत वेरी नाइस यू 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 दैट आर द फर्स्ट शायर वी हैड ऑन आवर शो थैंक वेरी मच सो आई जस्ट फ्यू मोर क्वेश्चंस लेफ्ट यू नो यू वेरी यंग इवन नाउ हैव यू हैड एनी मेंटर्स एंड इफ सो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ इन्फ्लुएंस है सो आई थिंक मेंटरशिप रिली स्टार्टेड एट होम आई है seen my dad experimenting with a lot of stuff and like a lot of uh, the ideology of doing what you really want to do comes from my dad and then later from my br- brother like who's also an a uh, very successful entrepreneur he runs a company called qmath okay. uh, which is like one of the largest edtech companies uh, in india right now right so i think mentorship um, in this sense kind of began uh, began at home and um so, and because i have also been a student of classical music so i i have trained with uh, 
पंडित दशवाल एंड उस्ताद साफरी खान एंड पीपल लाइक दोज सो यू काइंड ऑफ सो आई वोट थिंक से दैट दिस इज अ डायरेक्ट ट्रेनिंग इन प्रोफेशनल और एनी थिंग लाइक दैट राइट बट यू काइंड ऑफ सी हाउ दिस पीपल बिहेव विद अदर पीपल एंड दैट काइंड ऑफ ट्रेन यू इन सर्टन सेंस ऑन अ सब कॉन्शियस लेवल एंड सम ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट दे टोल्ड मी लेट से टेन ईयर्स बैक दे कम टू मी नाउ एंड वेन यू आर इन अचुएशन एंड वेन यू रियलाइज ओके यार नो या So just a couple of more questions for you. Uh, you know, uh, uh, failure for us in India is something which is not really acceptable. You know, we, our parents have never taught us that it's okay to fail. It's always come first. Right, right, right. right? right. Be right in the front of the queue. Right. And yet we all fail. Right. You right. know, and we keep going. Right. What have been some of your learnings? from some of your mistakes or failures uh, that you've had so far so i'll like briefly comment on i think uh, why it is the way it is right and why is the indian society the way it is i think maybe it's not so much to do with their personalities it's, it's to do with the kind of um, era that they have gone through and maybe the opportunities weren't there and maybe even a small failure just meant a large difference in the kind of a lifestyle that you will eventually end up having right and i understand that and in one sense a lot of people uh, like a lot of young entrepreneurs also come to me and say yaar hamare parents hame nahi karne de rahe and stuff like that aap kaun se bahut umar ho gaye hai ab bhi bahut young hai nahi i am also <laughs> i'm not that young <laughs> okay so uh, so yeah i tell them that see uh, that deterrent to failure or their uh, fear of failure should kind of act as a motivation for you right so if you are able to convince them that you are doing something at and it's the right direction that's the first step to convince yourself that that you are going the right direction right i think that's kind of your safety net that's kind of your guiding principle also so i i won't say that this uh, kind of fear of failure is all bad it kind of helps us um, talk to ourselves help us recalibrate our thoughts and so like that yeah So in terms of failure, yeah, I have tried a lot of things. I have, uh, I, I've tried to build algorithms that would create music. I have tried to uh, launch small brands which haven't worked out and stuff like that. But I think why I don't consider them failures because they were like initial steps in what we are doing right now. Correct. So uh, Aditya and I, my co-founder and I, we started a brand called Unsnag, and it didn't work out very well for us, right? But if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't be doing this. Yeah. So Anand thank you very much talking to you has been a very enriching experience for me personally and I'm sure for a lot of viewers all the pleasure good luck you. good luck with keto fi with fine foods and most importantly with your poetry yeah thank you <laughs> thank you very thank much you. thank you for listening to the brand called you podcast be sure to visit tbcy.in to join the conversation access show notes and discover fantastic bonus content you can follow us on youtube twitter facebook and instagram simply search for the brand called you thank you and see you next week